May the force be with you. Wait. You think you can't make mistakes? Greetings, my friends. From this universe or not, I am John Maffio, aka Mothman Jones. Welcome to Mothman Jones Movie Reviews, and today's featured film is the sequel to the reinvigorated franchise Star Trek Into Darkness. It's directed by the one and only J.J. Abrams, and it stars Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, Zoe Saldana, Simon Pegg, John Cho. I'm gonna take the cryptic route and be as vague as possible, but the story revolving around this film pertains to the USS Enterprise crew involving all your favorite characters including Captain Kirk, Spock, Uthura, Scotty, Bones, Sulu, and all of them, and they encounter the malicious villain known as John Harrison, played by the incredible Benedict Cumberbatch, and he has a batch of secrets, so they must activate the warp drive, take a deep voyage to space, retrieve John Harrison, bring him back to Earth, and try him. But it's not going to be that easy. Now moving forward, I did not review the first Star Trek in a video yet, I plan to in the future, but in a nutshell, I think that the Star Trek 2009 reboot is one of the best modern blockbusters of the current 21st century. And I had no idea what to expect with that movie when I watched it at home. I didn't see it in theaters. My jaw dropped. And ever since then, I've been anticipating a sequel. And it's been four years, four long years. It's finally come. And what did I think? Hold the pause for suspense. It was awesome. The acting for Star Trek standards is incredible. Everybody comes to play. Everybody has their distinguished personalities. Kirk, played by Chris Pine, definitely shows what he had in the first movie. Charisma and strength and just this really cool wit. But he brings something more mature to the role in this movie. Zachary Quinto, without question, is an incredible Spock. I didn't watch the original show, but I have an idea of the character and he has carried the essence of that character well. Every character has something to do of significance, and nobody is left behind. The friendships and relationships that were sprouted within the first movie are brought through again in this film with more emphasis and further development. For Trekkies and casual moviegoers alike, the character interactions are very engaging, and they progress the film with great pacing. And that brings me into the pacing. The movie is over two hours long, but it flies through seamlessly. Obviously, I can't speak for everybody who's seen Star Trek Into Darkness, but I was personally engrossed and emotionally satisfied by the end frame and in every other empirical sense. The structure of the progressing plot and the screenplay are meticulously crafted, and this movie is action-packed. The entire thing feels like an emotional and action-packed roller coaster that doesn't stop from the beginning frame to end frame. It starts off with this crazy action sequence with the whole Enterprise, and every moment has purpose. There's nothing here that will tentatively or temporarily please people. It will carry out after the movie's over and you'll be thinking about it for a while. I'm still thinking about it right now. And it puts a smile on my face. This was very satisfying. And it just builds upon everything that was introduced in the first movie, and just it leaves you with this feeling that you don't really get often in the movie theaters. I've said it before in my reviews, but I don't believe in hyperboles, but when I truly have to speak something, I speak what's on my mind, honestly and genuinely. And I really do think, in this moment in time, that Star Trek Into Darkness is quite a sequel. G great sequel. Because it basically takes everything that you love in the first movie and just enhances it to a whole other level. Nero, the first villain, was very underdeveloped and he was weak. However, on the other hand, Benedict Cumberbatch, John Harrison, which I will not speak about at all as a character and how he pertains to the plot, he was very commanding and malevolent in presence, and you just felt every grip of energy coming from his dialogue and facial expressions. Just the way he pronunciates and demonstrates dialect just makes the whole room vibrate when he talks, and you can't help but feel entranced by everything he's saying. Even though you might not understand it at first, it'd be like, this guy's terrifying. So, shall we begin? This film, along with great character interaction and emotion, is packed with action throughout. 
and it's a lot of fun. The peril and the danger is enhanced, and just the overall thrill factor is enhanced. The music by Michael Giacchino is absolutely amazing, and the movie looks beautiful. If this movie is any indication of what Star Wars Episode 7 is going to look like, Star Trek Into Darkness, it has all the great action, all the great emotion, all the interactions, all the heart that you would want. More heart than the first film. And by the end of the movie, everything is wrapped up in a bow, and if they didn't make a Star Trek 3, they wouldn't have to, because this one ends with great precision. Star Trek Into Darkness is a mafadociously darn good film. It's a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Damn, it felt good talking about this film. If you have seen Star Trek Into Darkness or you plan to see it, let me know anything about this film, the previous film, or anything Star Trek in the comments down below. Please subscribe to Mothman Jones, like this video, and check out Facebook, Twitter, and We Live Film in the info box. I am John Maffio, aka Mothman Jones. Live long and prosper. It's very exciting to know that J.J. Abrams' next movie is Star Wars Episode 7, releasing in about two years. Just think about that. We're going to have a new Star Wars movie in two years under J.J. Abrams' helm. Oh my god! See you next time. I believe in you, Jim.